Hey, this is Presh Talwalker. How sharp are your calculus skills? The formula for integration by parts states that the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. Let's use the formula to evaluate the integral of 1 over x dx. We'll set u to be 1 over x and dv to be dx. du will equal negative 1 over x squared dx and v will be equal to x. We now use the integration by parts formula. We need u times v. This will be 1 over x times x. We then need to subtract out v du. This will be the following integral. We now need to simplify this equation. 1 over x times x will be equal to 1. And the next integral will all simplify to be the integral of 1 over x dx. And this is all equal to the integral of 1 over x dx. We now have the integral of 1 over x dx on both sides, so we cancel it out, and we end up that the left-hand side will be equal to 0, and the right-hand side will be equal to 1. So we proved that 0 is equal to 1. Now, of course, this is an absurd conclusion. So the question is, where is the mistake in this supposed proof that 0 is equal to 1? Take a moment to review this proof carefully. When you're ready, keep watching the video for an explanation of where the mistake is. So the mistake in the proof is canceling the indefinite integrals and forgetting about the constant of integration. Up to this line in the proof is correct. The problem is when we take these two indefinite integrals and cancel them out. You can't cancel them out because they're only unique up to a constant of integration. To put it another way, Let's suppose that the antiderivative of 1 over x is equal to some function, capital F of x. When we evaluate the indefinite integral on the left-hand side, it'll be capital F of x plus a lowercase c, some constant of integration. When we evaluate this indefinite integral on the right-hand side, it will be the same function, but it may be a different constant of integration, which I'll denote by a capital C. So we can cancel out these antiderivatives, but then we end up with the equation that lowercase c is equal to 1 plus uppercase c. So we haven't proven that 0 is equal to 1. We've actually proven that the constant of integrations will differ by 1. In other words, 0 is equal to 1 up to a constant of integration. So that's the mistake in the proof is canceling out these indefinite integrals. So one way to avoid this mistake is you could consider limits of integration. So if you had the integral from a to b of 1 over x dx, we then use the integration by parts formula to get the integral of 1 from a to b plus the integral of 1 over x dx from a to b. Now what happens when we evaluate the function 1 from a to b? Well, this will be equal to 1 at both points, and we're going to subtract that, so we get 1 minus 1. And of course, 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. So when we simplify this, we get the definite integral from a to b of 1 over x dx will be equal to the definite integral of 1 over x dx from a to b. So we have no contradiction here, and it's also not very interesting. But you can avoid the mistake of canceling indefinite integrals and getting absurd results like 0 equal 1 by considering limits of integration. This video is also a reminder that it's very, very important when you do indefinite integrals or take antiderivatives to always include that plus c. Students always complain that, oh, I didn't put the plus c there, but I got the correct answer. No, you really need to put that plus c, otherwise you can get absurd results like 0 equals 1. So how sharp were your skills? Did you spot the mistake in this false proof? Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I make videos on math. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions, which you can follow on Facebook, Google+, and Patreon. You can catch me on social media at Press Hellwalker. And if you like this video, please check out my books. There are links in the video description.